It's time to step into the Coming Out Lounge, a cool, safe space to be true to your sexual self. With your host, Rick Clemens. Rick has helped hundreds of people come out of the closet, and now each week he's bringing you cool insights for loving and accepting yourself, boosting your self-confidence, and living a guilt-free, purpose-filled life on the other side of the closet doors. Cuddle up with yourself and get ready for heartwarming coming out stories, ideas for living authentically, and tips for being fully self-expressed. Now here's your host, Coming Out Coach Rick. Hey, 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 closet dwellers and closet busters. It is time once again for the Coming Out Lounge. But you know what? This is a biggie. If you haven't been paying attention, this is episode 200. And I'm freaking excited to be here. And I'm actually very excited for our guest today because, well, let's be honest. I'm 54. He's 50-something. Today, we're celebrating 200 episodes of the Coming Out Lounge. He's celebrating 35 years in the music business, just rocking the dance music industry. And all I have to say to that is you're never too old to rock the world your way. But it does beg the question of how do you continue to fully bring yourself to the world and keep yourself in that world when it seems like the whole world may be focused on youth and beauty? And then even more compelling is what is the benefit of staying in your groove, doing your thing, living your passion, managing everything in your wheelhouse when all the signs may say, hey, you got to keep changing, 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 changing. Well, my guest today is one awesome guy. He is somebody that just before he came on the air, I told him he really helped me kind of settle into my own coming out journey back in the late 90s, early 2000s. He's in a uh, Grammy Award nominated DJ music producer extraordinaire. He's worked with the likes of Madonna, Cher, Gloria Stefan, and we'll get into some of the latest stuff he's doing. He is a guy who totally knows how to rock your house. Mr. Tony Moran, welcome to the Coming Out Lounge, brother. Thank you so much, Rick. That was such a great intro. I don't even know how to, how to respond to that. Uh, based on the few things that you said so far is that you get to a point in your life where you accept that you feel so secure, you feel so connected, yeah. you know, to those that are listening to you on the dance floor or interacting with you. And, mm -hmm. and somehow, I mean, there is this spiritual kind of energy that you get comes from you and that gets back to you. Mm -hmm. And you can even hear it, whether somebody's playing it on some mix show tape on the other side of the beach or, mm -hmm. or like banging out of their headphones. And it just puts a smile on your face to know that, you know, that there's still something that I can provide that has an effect. And then hopefully it's a positive one or a good feeling one or something that allows you to distract from all the, distractions that happen just because yeah. life occurs yeah and so you know with that i'm constantly inspired to regenerate this even though i don't always know where it exactly comes from but i know it's coming for so some reason it just keeps on coming and i keep feeling this, i keep going out to these audiences and just giving of myself mm. without having to worry about you know if i got gray hair or you know if i'm you know 10 pounds heavier, 10 right, pounds, right. pounds lighter. <laughs> it's just really, at that moment in time, I'm like, I'm the communicator. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I totally don't pay attention to those things that are going on. Right. And sometimes when I just watch myself in videos, you know, jumping around, moving, singing along with the crowd and all that stuff, I'm just like, oh, my God, it's right. not me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And exactly. It's like, like, who still want But, you know, I live for it. Yeah. And I live for it, and I'm like, you know, I don't regret it whatsoever and i put a lot of work and a lot of effort into it and you know nothing that compares to anybody else who loves what they do right I just put what i just put my all into it and in doing that it doesn't always become a success yep. what it is is that i'm consistent about not giving up on what i'm doing and with that more good stuff comes out than not or i know that well i think i think you just right. yeah i think you just said something a couple of really powerful well, a lot of things you said were really powerful time but a couple of things you said about the regeneration number one and just consistently knowing not everything's going to work out quite the way it is i think we're in a space and time especially as lgbtq individuals where this regeneration you know we were just kind of starting to sell along and now we're having to regenerate we're having to bring the power back into who we are as the people and then we have someone like you who then constantly you're regenerating because you're in a business that, you know, you got to be fresh. You got to be bringing it every time you produce something. I think it's a beacon of light to all of us as humanity, but especially within our community that 
let's just really hone in on we're always going to be regenerating. It's kind of like we're always going to be coming out. And I think that's kind of what your music represents is it's always a fresh beat. We're always bringing something new to the world. And that should be kind of the anthem these days. It's what it feels like to me. So I'm curious for you, as you constantly are regenerating yourself and you're trying to bring new stuff to the beat and to the world and into the music industry, what is that guiding force for you? And I'm sure it changes all the time, but you know, what's like one guiding force within yourself, within your soul that says, this is me, this is Tony, this is how I show up. Well, people ask me that all the time because I'm just such a cheerleader for the whole process, and that includes yep. the people that are walking in the room, the first person who goes on the dance floor, or the last person that leaves. I don't force myself to have this mission statement. It's just that I go in there, and whether it's 10 people on the dance floor or 10,000, mm -hmm. you know, or 20,000, if you want me to prove it to you why you should be feeling great, like, I'm more than happy to share that with you or to work for it, mm -hmm. you know, to... You know, because not every crowd is the same, and there is something about energy that is contagious. And so I'm not there to, like, just make you start laughing and laughing at everything. I want to be able to touch upon senses through lyrics, through beats, almost like as a storyteller, where there are different chapters in the music that I'm playing that allows for you to feel this, like, total, you know, this total sensation by the time it's over, or by the time it's over for you. You know what I mean? It's like not everybody has to stay from... 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the right. morning to feel that. Yeah. You just If you could just be there long enough to be like, wow, that was just so cool. That felt so great. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention to that my shirt is totally soaking wet mm. or that I didn't go to the bathroom all night long mm. or that all my friends stayed hanging out together. Or, you know, it doesn't happen all the time. And I, and I feel that's the kind of energy I try to put out. And that's kind of the bubble that I bring in. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it is it is and, the bubble that I, you bring in. It's that energy. And I love that you brought up this energy piece because energy is so freaking contagious. And when I'm working with clients who are coming out, they're like, well, I just don't feel like, you know, I'm doing this right or whatever. And I say, tap into the energy. However your energy is for coming out and being who you are is who you are. Yeah, you may get in you, you may get in a club or you may be at a pride event or whatever it is, but tap the energy that fits for you. And I love how you brought that whole picture of, you know, whether you're dancing there and you're there from, you know, till six in the morning or you come in, you bop in, you bop out after two hours or then you realize you have, you know, your shirt's soaking wet. It's your energy. So embrace your energy in this moment of how you choose to show up. It's that simple. I believe it. And, and, and you know, I apply the same whether you want to call it a philosophy or a feeling. I apply that to myself because, you know, I'm not. You know, it's like I don't live in a perfect world exactly. I'm happy with my life. Right. But sometimes as I'm starting, there are all these layers of details and responsibilities and or other things that are going on around me that I, at the moment that I'm there to work, it's just it is a natural reaction. Like It's almost like being a soldier. You know, it's like you, you get in there and it's, hey, that can wait till later. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm here for them. Yeah. Then I'm here to share my problems unless I'm writing a song that allows you to go to help you see through, mm -hmm. you know, your problems, at least for a moment, it could just be so relieving. It could take such a weight off of you just to know that you could just rethink something differently because you hear Whitney sing, it's not right, but it's okay. I'm right, going right. to make it anyway <laughs> on the dance floor at that moment, you know, those one word, those couple of words, singing, even though I didn't write it, singing them along back to back, somehow is self-empowering because mm -hmm. through a song and through the collective of people that you're surrounded by, they are all releasing that at the same time. So it's like one giant, humongous, joyous purging. Mm -hmm. And and then there's some other times where there's no words whatsoever. It's just somehow the collection of rhythms that are going and the beats are banging, but not hurting you you know what right, i mean right. yeah you know because i like to be energetic and there is there is an absolute difference between you know really energetic or really aggressive mm -hmm. and and i think so and in some cases where it can be called for depending on the style the, the way the party is creating their signature that may be required to release different kinds of energy but you know that's not me you mm -hmm. know i love writing songs i love producing songs i love music i love musical energy i love i love sexy energy mm -hmm. whether it's through lyric or through just music and i still just mentioning those 
kinds of themes. You know, I could play ten hours long, taking you through these you know, beautiful roller coaster rides right. that never that never break down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, unless I have to go to the bathroom and the work stops. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm curious. You, you got a lot of stuff going on. We're going to get into that here in a few minutes. But what's really capturing your attention these days? That's really inspiring you. I mean, there's lots of crap going on in our world these days. But I know for the creative types, I'm one of those guys. It's like, okay, but lots of things can capture my attention to help me get those creative juices flowing. So what's kind of got your attention right now? For me personally, I kind of, you know, have shied away more from remixing other people's music Mm -hmm. and being, you know, more involved. And remixing is such an art within itself. And I'm so proud of every mix I've ever done. But now I'm just at a point where I want to be... You know, to communicate to others is learning how to communicate through yourself simultaneously and working with different artists and, you know, who are talented in their own right. And again, like, you know, when they come into the room with me, like, there's only one rule. Let's get the best out of each other. And so by developing all these new kinds of songs, like, my Fire, for instance, or mm-hmm. So Happy by Jason Walker, or Free People with Martha Wash, and, and you know, watching these songs ascend, and watching people who that don't have a Mariah Carey or Ariana Grande, you right. know, kind of, you know, backing financial backing, can still rise to the top, and it's great because I just love to be part of, again, part of that variety. You know, it's like as I my songs, I'm not worried about it being bigger than fantasizing about it being bigger than Justin Bieber or right, right. Chainsmokers. I just want to make the best possible song that I hope connects with people on some level. And then as I'm DJing, which is partly what keeps me young, is that I get to actually experience that as I just finished writing it or mm-hmm. I just finished it mm-hmm. that day or the day before. And watching those things happen, like when I did Easy as Life for Deborah Cox or Unfaithful for Rihanna, it's just like playing it for the first time myself as the DJ and watching these reactions occur from the audience who are extremely passionate about what it is that they love, whether they're just throwing their hands up in the air or whether they're woohooing or stomping right. their feet is so it's such a magical experience. And, you know, I enjoy it. And sometimes I'm jumping around. I'm a little sore. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Day from like, <laughs> I feel like I just came out like a, you know, Richard Simmons video exactly. you know, without the clothing, but, <laughs> without the same outfit. But Well, what I love about what well, you just brought something really beautiful to life there of, you know, watching this come to life. Yes. You're behind the scenes. You're getting it ready. You know, kind of where you're going to go. And then you suddenly see that reaction, you know, those for the first time when you're playing it there live and people are like moving and grooving. And what flashed in my mind in that moment was it's very similar for me as a coach. When I suddenly start hearing my client, you know, whether they're face to face here with me or, you know, on a zoom call or video chat or phone call. And I start hearing the transformation start to happen. It's like, yes, it's almost like the master puppeteer is like in the moment with the client and you're right there in the moment with the people on the dance floor because you're seeing them come to life you're seeing that energy and even though you may not know them personally i'm quite sure that just through that energy you can see people either letting go and fully letting themselves just be there some people are probably going through some interesting transition within themselves of you know wow i needed this to really move myself forward so it's got to just be an amazing feeling to just look over a crowd and go look what i've created that's helping them step into something that's so beautiful and personal for them it's just it's got to be an amazing feeling to watch that happen it is it is if you're traveling around the world i've seen people you know, share how they express their emotions. And here in Brazil, people start, you know, they get goosebumps and they show it to you in front of you or they start crying and all this. And people who don't speak any English at all yeah. in, in, in Asia are singing along to every single word, every single ad lib to walk away by Christine W., you know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> or in this case, my fire. And I'm stunned. Yeah. There's no time to feel proud. You just get emotional is emotional. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, you know, this thing raises through you. And sometimes during some moments at a point, you know, when I feel that I've that I have that level of confidence with the crowd where I'm not playing song by song, I'm playing 
I've already I've established a relationship, a level of trust between me, myself, and the audience. And when that occurs, you know, you get to express yourself freely because they're in it for the run now. They're in it to experience the whole movie. You see how it goes, you know, not, you know, and in some cases, you know, some DJs, you know, they give people what they want at that moment. They just want to hear hit after hit after hit, you know, because they just didn't have a good time. They don't want to get so, you know, they don't need to, you know, they don't need to overanalyze. But for me, it's it's like it's an experience. And again, it's like I, I just like to know that I did something, you know, invoke that experience mm-hmm. and uh, a positive one. And it's, you know, it's wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. And and uh, just like doing homework, I study what I do. I listen to a zillion things. My boyfriend just sees me listening for, hour, you know, for a five hour set. I'm like listening to music for days at a time only because I just want to be able to have that data immediately accessible to me mm-hmm. upon, you know, at the, at the speed of thought yep. to know what I might be looking for, what I might want. I don't want to think of what uh, I expect I'm going to do and plan it out. So mm-hmm. Each audience is different and what I played tonight may not be in the same sequence that I play tomorrow or right. maybe totally different groups of songs. But again, the experience is the same because if I can allow for people to to be stimulated, to release, to look on the brighter side of things, or to or just be able to say, hey, I'm in the moment right now. This is a beautiful moment. You know, it's like watching a perfect sunset or yeah. a perfect sunrise or, or watching whales, like, you know, mm-hmm. fly out of the ocean and do a jump. It's a moment. Yeah, it's and, a moment. And, you know, I try to create as many moments as possible to the audience that's either on the dance floor or, you know, or downloads it from iTunes and they feel the experience through the speaker on their laptop. You know, it's just, it can happen in any manner of ways. And it's, it's a great feeling to know that people appreciate it. That's very cool. So we've been talking about a lot of the joy stuff that comes. So I'm curious, given everything that's going on in the world and you're traveling all over the place, you know, Mexico City and Vegas and, you know, everywhere you're going, we're going to talk about the awards you just got to here in a few minutes and then about My Fire and some of the other stuff that's just released. But I'm curious, as you're traveling and you're continuing to do your craft and just masterfully bring it to the world, what are some of the biggest challenges in the world right now as you do this that you're seeing that, you know, it could be around LGBTQ stuff. It could be the world in general in your industry. What are some of the real challenges of bringing your craft to this crazy planet we call mother earth right now? Sometimes it could be a little nerve wracking because it's like, you know, let's say I just, a few months ago I played in South Korea mm. and, you know, and I'm finishing, it's like seven or eight o'clock in the morning and I'm being taken to the airport, and I just experienced this feeling of love and, mm. you know, brotherly and sisterly love, you know, right, right. all going all going on, and it's a beautiful world, you know? It's like the Eden of music. And then as they're taking me to the airport, there is a million man or a million people protest against the current government in South Korea, I got right, North, right. North Korea, you couldn't even have a dance party. Well, sure. But you're like, oh my God, like that is the real world mm-hmm. in this area. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or if I'm playing in Tel Aviv, and you know these, you know these young people are, you know, are required of them. It's happened in many countries at different times to have mandatory military, you know, training uh, and stuff. Yeah. Training and. And then when they go into the club and they're dancing and singing and and and, ex- and expressing themselves, it's like you know there are no guns in the air, mm-hmm. hands in the air, and yeah. I just it's a perfect you know again you know their real world the next day may be to have to put on a uniform and look through scanners and to protect their country right. and to protect their families and and at this moment it's like. I'm going to just think about being happy, why I'm a human being, why I'm on the circus, to be mm-hmm. able to enjoy the good things in life as they come to you and know that that makes it easier to work on the rest of your life because, you know, it's like, you know, it's not all the same every day. You can make a change. And you, the same difference can happen if you download a CD of mine or of any other artist that you may like that makes you es- escape. Like, you yeah. know, for me, it would be listening to the Thriller album and every single song takes me back to the 
wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place. You yeah, know? yeah. So, uh, again, you know, I'm not, this whole bubble thing that I was telling you about, sometimes it travels with me. So, of course, I got to get on a, on a plane just like everybody else and right. go through the travel nightmares and planes being delayed and, you know, planes being canceled and cranky people who lost their bags and, you know, and that's part of the travel. You know, I'm not, mm. I'm not going there from place to place on like us one right. I'm going like on American, <laughs> I'm going on American airlines and you know, I'm just one of the lucky ones that didn't get dragged off the plane, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm sure. But as I'm saying, you know, you experience those things and sometimes it could make you feel weathered, testy, cranky. Yeah. But as you're getting closer and closer to the spot that you need to be in, because it could take me 17 hours to get to a, place where I'm only going to be playing music for three and a half or four hours, maybe sometimes five hours or six hours. So I got to make those hours count. Absolutely. To me, that's where I release all that stuff. And it's like, okay, you know, I'm like, I'm wearing the same t-shirt I wore on the plane because my bag didn't come. Right. You know what I mean? No sweat. I'll deal with it. Yeah. You just go. Don't get that close to me. (laughs) My doctor didn't come with with, with the order in it either. Right. Right. But I'm still going to drive. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about a couple of cool things that have recently happened for you. So you just recently got an award, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got a a few wonderful things. You know, Billboard magazine had uh, released a list of the hundred greatest dance artist of all time yeah and i was one of like three djs that was on it that's just so to be cool. even listed under the same category as madonna and rihanna you know and you know david Guetta. and i think out of the lgbt community that i was the only dj that was in it yeah you know so i really did feel like this wonderful colorless moment you mm-hmm. know what i mean or yeah. just, you know i was just the person that made been making music since I was 19 years old. And that was a very, to me, just a very satisfying moment to Mm. feel that respect among peers that you only know by name. You wouldn't think they would know you by name. You know, it's interesting. um, As you you just said that, you just took me back because you... So 19 years old would have been what year for you? Probably early 80s? I think it was like 84. Okay, yeah. Well, 84 is when I wrote my first song. And then... 86 was when I had my first top. So you just, you just took me back to, cause I, in 81, I was graduating from high school. So you and I are pretty close to the, that same yeah, generation. I, I graduated in 82. Yeah. yeah. And, and you just, I, I have goosebumps right now. I have to say, as soon as you said that, I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah, we were right in the heart of the thriller era and all that sort of stuff. It was just, you know, and it, it's just so heartwarming. So first of all, congrats on that award, man. Cause that, that is a huge thing. Just, you know, just the fact that you as an LGBTQ person are in that genre and representing just is like, I wish if you were sitting here with me, I'd be giving you a big bear hug right now. So, so anyway, continue on, man. You've got that award, a few others as well. You've got fire that you just did with Nile Rogers and Kimberly. Yeah. Yeah. My fire just went again, which was another wonderful experience to know that, as I said to you, that I've, I've really just gravitated toward writing songs that are coming from me, like lyric, you know, of course, with wonderful collaborators, you know, that change from here to there, or I yeah. just write it on my own. But, you know, having somebody that I respect so much from as, as a, not only as a musical talent and a musical legend, but as a humanitarian. And it was like, wow, man, you know, that was so cool that he wanted, now I just wanted to be an artist on this song along with me and this incredible singer named Kimberly Davis. You know, our song went number one on the Billboard dance chart. And has been number one on multiple dance charts and is now top five in the United Kingdom. And, you know, it's again, that it was a wonderful experience. And from this particular album that I had done for myself, it's like more like a, it's like this is Tony, it's, it's called Mood Swings. And it's, it's a collection of various styles of music that I happen to love. And if, you know, my general fan just wants me to do dance music, right. then I've given more than a fill of like 13 new songs of that. And then on the other side, whether you play it or not, it's just, there's one, I have more than one way to express myself mm-hmm. on a musical level. And if, you know, and if I'm the only one that gets to appreciate it, then I'm fine with that because at least I got the chance to express myself. Absolutely. And that's what I've done in this, 
And so from that album, Mood Swings, you know, My Fire is a part of the five consecutive number one Billboard dance songs on an album released by an independent artist on an independent label, which is my label called Mr. Tam Man Music. And I'm like, you know, that's pretty cool. And that's a pretty cool streak. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, not a lot of people. That... And again, it just continues to mm. inspire me to create better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or to find more things in myself. And, and as well, to be constantly reaching out to not just an audience, but I'm very you know intrigued by sounds from different people and some people that you meet that you like their track that I downloaded on Beatport or mm-hmm. Amazon or, or, or DJ Sense. You know, I get a lot of music sent to me by new and upcoming remixers and DJs. And when I hear something that I like, I write them back and half the time they're, they're like, you know, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe you wrote back to me. And I'm like, I like to hear more of that. Yeah. Would, you know, would you mind if I gave you a vocal to try mm-hmm. to, you know, do an actual remix of that instead of just giving me a a bunch of beats and you That's know cool. and, and I don't mind sharing the, my my own personal knowledge whether they use it or not to say what I feel you know can help to enhance your message and Absolutely. Um, that youthful vibrant energy is what helps to keep me young you know mm-hmm. what I mean on the inside you know and, and and because of that while I'm out there with all these Cats wearing like skinny jeans and all right, that right. stuff, you know. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, honestly, I just cannot tell like what if I'm too short. I mean, I, yeah, I could tell that I'm shorter than most of the people there, but you know, I just feel like one of the group. You yeah, know, I don't feel yeah. like a, I don't, I don't feel like an outsider. Absolutely, I feel like an insider. Total insider. You know, there's something that you said I want to make sure the listeners really pick up on because it was actually a beautiful. It was a beautiful little nugget of wisdom when you said, if I'm the only one who gets to appreciate what I just did and I'm the only one that gets it, then at least I got to express myself. And I think that's kind of the anthem here of the coming out lounge. And what what I talk about all the time is even if you come out and you're the only one who gets it and you only get to experience that and you just kind of laid it right out there, Tony, when you said that. At least you get to express yourself. And what I love about the work that you do in your music and everything is you're constantly getting to express yourself. And yes, I know you give a damn because you want people to experience it. But there's times, and I just heard you say it, there's times that even if all you get to do is express yourself and you're the only one who really gets it, then at least you did it. And I hope people who are listening to this really get that the coming out journey is so much about expressing yourself and being yourself and as hard as it can be at times and as much of a struggle as it could be if you're the only one who gets it be okay with that because that means you're being you and that's what this is all about and you're such a torchbearer of this about doing the kind of work you do tony of you're being you every step of the way yeah is it tough at times i've heard that in this conversation there can be some challenges but The point is you're constantly being yourself. So uh, I'm curious, man, as we start to wrap this thing up, if you could really like say what you think the LGBTQ message is right now. And I know that's a big question, but what would you lay down (laughs) if you were going to lay down and say, this is what I think our message really is. What would it be from your perspective? Because I know you're out there seeing the world and you probably see a whole lot of LGBTQ stuff. And some of it you don't see because in places you may show up. But if you could say this is really what you think our message is right now, what would it be? I would have to say that it would be that all those letters slapped together should mean what they say is that you're putting them all together because you accept each other. Mm. And what you do, which is, you know, it it happens on, you know, when you're talking about millions and millions of people that are in the world, you know, that you know, that if we're accepting ourselves as being not only diverse, but that we have chosen to accept ourselves and one another, it would be great to see a little more of that because you do see it all the time and it's Mm -hmm. beautiful. You know what I mean? And it's really important not to be honest by your actions to let people know that they can be accepted like you know like the little guy with the white hair like don't walk through the side of the dance floor because he's not your type you know right right it's not about being a type it's about saying hey everyone's welcome on this dance floor right you know whether you're young then and you know and then also to be able to let people know that you're 
you're in a position to make someone feel that they're safe where they're at just by like letting them know that they exist by just even like looking their way mm-hmm. it just it makes a difference yeah. and so i but to me it's not you know the art of being in the lgbt community is that we are dysfunctional in many ways but that is actually what's more right than wrong mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that you know that we have chosen to be different because that is what makes us comfortable in our own skin mm-hmm. and in and, and our own soul and so it's only dysfunctional by clinical definition but it's certainly not dysfunctional in, right. in matters of the heart or in matters of life mm. I think that's just in short. In, yeah, in no, short. I love what you just uh, said. No, you I said you, you. I'm I'm quiet because you just nailed it perfectly. I'm like, man, that's like the perfect place to like wrap this up because what you just said is true. It's like just be. If we could just accept all of ourselves, you know. And I know there's lots of you know, there's lots of stuff that goes on in any community, but the dysfunctionality that we are, which isn't a. I want people to make sure they understand. It's a beautiful thing what Tony just said. We are dysfunctional for a reason because that's who we choose to be. It's not that we made the choice. It's We're okay with being this and we're going to just continue to be who we are. And if everybody else could just accept that in the world, man, if we could just accept each other's dysfunction, then it'd probably be a whole different planet that we're living on right now. I'm so glad you said that, man. That was just like, uh, again, I've got goosebumps and I'm like, yes, this is the, this is the ending that I wanted. This is the perfect way to wrap up, you know, two great celebrations. Congrats, man, on everything you've done in the past 35 years and for still just kicking ass and making music and putting smiles and raising hearts and making pulses race, man. I'm just, you don't know how happy I am to have had you be the guy that I get to celebrate the 200th episode of this podcast. So just, thank, well, thank you. It was my total pleasure. It's all mine. And, you know, as I said, when I was in L.A., I would just love just to take me out for lunch and just, yeah. you know. Let's do it, man. Yeah, let's do it. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out next. I know you're all over the place, but I'll connect with you on all the social medias and through our PR people. But um, thank you again, man. Safe travels. Love you bunches. Enjoy the rest yeah. of your day. And we just so appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. And congratulations on the show. And to all your audience, thank you for your time. And I just want to say thank you to all my listeners for being on this journey with me. This is a huge milestone, and it warms my heart to know that we have hit 200 episodes of the Coming Out Lounge. And I couldn't have made it without all of you that tune in each and every week, sometimes twice a week, to just hear the things that I want to share, to hear my guests, to go through these journeys of coming out of our closets without you, the listeners. I don't know where we'd be, but I know this, that I will never stop doing this because I really enjoy it. I enjoy reaching out across the globe to over 70 countries and to really touching hearts wherever they may need to be touched to have the strength and the boldness and the power to step forward and live your life uncloseted. And as we're coming close to switching from the Coming Out Lounge to Life Uncloseted, I want you to know we're always going to continue to tell these kind of stories. We're going to keep bringing stories of the LGBTQ journey, as well as other stories of people stepping forward in big, bold ways to live their life uncloseted. And with that, I just want to say once again, a very heartfelt thank you for being my listener, to subscribing to the Coming Out Lounge podcast, and to being a part of my world. I love you all, and thanks again. So there you have it. Another episode of the Coming Out Lounge has come to a screeching halt. Well, maybe not a screeching halt, but yeah, it is wrapping up right here. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening and being with us here today. And I want to reach out to my listeners right now and say, you know what? I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your questions that you might like to get addressed here on the show. I'd love to hear your comments, your suggestions. Maybe you know someone who would make a great guest. So if you would like to do that, you would like to give us some feedback and give us some ideas for guests or you want a question that you want me to answer, give us a ring. Yes, that means dial your phone, 949-371-8559, 949-371-8559. That actually goes to a Skype voicemail box, so you can call us from anywhere that you have access to a Skype number. Um, You don't have to have Skype to dial that number for those of you who are out of the country that might make it a little bit easier or if you want to send us an email just send it to rick at rickclemens.com again rick at rick 
clemens.com and clemens is c-l-e-m-o-n-s we would love 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 to hear from you so we can put more into the show that's coming from our listeners and with that we're going to call it a wrap and wish you well for the coming week never stop stepping out stepping up and stepping into living your powerful truth because every time you do it's simple to be bold take care everyone